Welcome back, back, everybody. Just like that. Stream number two of Fresh Friday, our oh. very first Fresh Friday. Yes, which love is it. all about fresh water. We have so many awesome segments coming up. So um, we've made it to number two, and this is a really, really good one. Yes, yes. This is you guys are in for a treat with this for sure. If you guys haven't already. Uh, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, but hit the notification bell. Turn them, turn it on to all so that you get notified when we're going live today especially, but also any other time that we're going live. Um, also share Fresh Friday too. Yeah. If, if you on guys Facebook, are in some Facebook groups or you know, just share it to your, your other hobbyist friends or you know, wherever you can, that helps us out a lot. Um, today is one of the few days a year that we run sales on water box aquariums. And everything today is about fresh water. So all of our fresh water tanks, as well as supplies are on sale up to 20% off. Um, so take advantage of that. It's run until the 24th, but you're gonna wanna get your orders in soon if you can, just so you can prevent missing out on inventory. So. And if you missed it on the first stream, we did announce a new product, Eden X, which is the big brother to Eden. Mm -hmm. um, available in three and four foot size, which is 60 and 80 gallons. And there is a pre-order discount available. So go check that out. Um, in your market. The variety of what's on sale and sales will vary by your market, so check your uh, proper yep. website. Yep, yep. All right, so for each stream, we are giving away two $500 gift cards. What you need to do, the giveaway is open now. It is open until 30 minute mark, and then it closes. The link is in the description as well if you go to waterboxaquariums.com. It is there as well under the 12 p.m. stream block. And get entered in you have the chance to win one of two $500 gift cards, which we'll announce towards the end of the stream. And also, during um, the stream, you're gonna randomly see a bonus word pop up on the screen. Um, this, you can go and enter into that giveaway for extra entries, so you do want to be paying attention. When that pops up, go get it entered in. Yep, you definitely wanna pay attention for that bonus word. It's gonna give you a much better chance at winning. Um, and guys, we're giving away over $10,000 today. Dang! Um, so definitely tune in. If you haven't already, go on to waterboxaquariums.com, enter that main giveaway, which mm -hmm. is for a total of three $1,000 gift cards that we're giving away at 7 p.m. So. Yep, so that giveaway is open until the 7 p.m. mark. Um, so get your entries in, and we will announce those at the end of the day. All right, so creating depth. You know, you have this aquarium, and you're trying to scape it, and you're trying to make it look bigger, give that feel, especially those really nice aquascapes of going further back and you know all that, very hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing to do, um, especially when you don't have the right guidance you right. know, to kind of explain how you create that. So this one here, we brought Joe Bruner in. He is going to explain how he did it with his, which is probably one of the best examples of creating depth. Um, and he's gonna tell you all about the process very, yeah. very exciting. So also Joe is with us here in the live chat on YouTube. So if you got questions for him, feel free to put, put them down there while we're, we're watching this pretty cool interview. Yep, let's check it out. All right, so Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We're gonna take a look into this amazing forest tank. Um, so let's get into it. Thanks, Gary. Awesome, well guys, thanks very much. I appreciate you guys uh, having me back. This is the fish room, and as you go in, um, I have uh, three or four water box tanks in here, uh, lots of terrariums, a uh, lot of fish art. Uh, it's kind of my office. I call it my office because uh, <laughs> I'll fish tanks, but I've got my uh, you know TV in here. I've got my uh, uh, computer in here, and all of my you know fish artwork. And uh, I think most importantly, what we want to talk about today is uh, my forest tank. And yes. uh, just love this room. I uh, started it from literally from scratch and um, I've enjoyed every bit of it. It looks like the perfect place to go and relax and attempt to work if you can, being surrounded by all of that. <laughs> um, so if anyone's been in our user group or seen Joe around with his aquarium knows this, like it's just, so different and so wonderful as far as presenting the depth and really cool aqua, you know, scaping of it. So we're gonna go through and talk about that. But first, where did you get into freshwater? When did this all start? Like, tell us your transition from beginning to getting till now. Well, it started when I was uh, six years old, and I, my teacher brought um, an aquarium to class, 
and I got sent home with a note. It was my parents' job to take me to a store and either get a plant or a fish. And um, they decided they liked it. So we got a fish tank of our own. And, you know, they took care of it for the first couple of years. And, you know, when I was eight or nine or so, I graduated. I was able to clean the tank and, you know, do things like that. I'm, uh, I'm 62 years old now. So I've literally been in this hobby for over 50 years. Wow, and just, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So you started out with kind of basic freshwater. When did you go more into this, you know, what I would call some professional gaping, really? Yeah, yeah, like, this sure. is a, you're definitely hitting that professional level um, of the, all the different aquariums that you've done. Well, I, I met a guy named Tom Barr. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He lives in uh, Sacramento. And um, I paid him to come over and give me a consultation fee or give me a consultation. And uh, he's the one that got me started. And I was gonna, I'm gonna say that's been about 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. And that was when I grew my first live plant. Everything else was plastic. And um, he gave me all the tips, all the tricks that I needed to do it. And, um, you know, I started out with pretty good success. And um, I've kind of evolved from there. This particular tank is probably my, my fifth or sixth uh, forest tank that I've done. I really enjoy um, that style of, uh, of media. Wow. wow. So it's kind of, would you say that through each one that you've done, you've perfected and kind of learned as you went to get to this, this one now? I guess you could say I haven't screwed up as much. Right? <laughs> I get a little bit better as time goes on. And uh, here's an example. Uh, if you look in the back, that's uh, Lemnophilia sessiliflora. And that, what, that plant gives me the height in the back that I need. Um, you're looking at uh, java fern in the front. Uh, this is Oklahoma Creek rock along with uh, manzanita. And, um, you know, it's, it's just something I really enjoy. And um, it's beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. It really does look like little trees in the back, too, sticking out. So well placed. All right, so we've seen the end result of the forest tank here. Let's talk about kind of the process, how you chose what aquarium you were going to use, which one it is, um, and then just kind of teach us, teach the viewers some information about how to create this amount of depth in your aquarium. Absolutely. Um, the first thing I knew is I wanted a water box, you know, and, you know, I love the clarity. I love the quality. So it wasn't a, wasn't a question of brand. It was more of a question of design and compatibility with what I wanted to do. And I really liked the height of the all-in-one. It's at 17.9 inches. It's a perfect height to grow plants. Mm. And it allows you to get the uh, light closer to the plants, closer to the substrate, and get that far down there where you really need it. Um, I also use the 4820 stand in combination because it only gives me a height of 53 inches, which was absolutely perfect for what I wanted to do because it makes the aquarium very easy to clean. I can literally stand flat footed. I can get my arm over the edge of the tank and I can clean way down in the substrate. And I, and I clean this tank once a week. It's a, it's a beast and it's a lot of work um, to keep it looking like this. So having that 53 inch height was, was absolutely perfect for me. And, and it's nice that you guys have so many options um, to choose from. So you say this is an all in one? It's an all in one and what I actually did, it's a peninsula. Okay. And what I actually did is I ripped out the insides. I took an X-Acto knife and a tiny <laughs> little hammer and it took me, <laughs> took me about two days wow. and it, it came out super easy. And um, that gave me that gave me the exact tank that I wanted, so it's kind of a kind of a MacGyver tank, so to speak. Okay, that's some good modifying right there to fit exactly what that's you funny, wanted. That's funny, Joe. Is <clears throat> I've been watching this tank progress, and until today, I did not pick up the black silicone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the telltale. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, it's, that it's an all-in-one versus a clear. True. I, usually, usually when I post the pictures of it, I kind of crop that out because I want to get just the tank in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you you found out <laughs> my. Secret. It's an all-in-one modified to be. So that's good. You found exactly what you needed for this exact build you're gonna do. All right. So you picked your tank. 
you took out the <clears throat> all-in-one filtration. How did you just, I don't, like I wouldn't even know where to start to create something that yeah. perception-wise, so, you know, yeah. so much depth yeah. and Di stuff. Dig into that a little bit for us. How, you, how did you get to this point with creating the depth in the aquascape in general? Sure, the, um, the hardscape is probably the most important part about an aquascape. And I, I built like a little dojo in my garage and I used um, the black that you see in the back or on the, on the table is actually a, uh, it's a 48 by 19 inch piece of flow cell. And flow cell is actually a hollow frame that's about an inch thick and it allows, it allows you to spread the weight of the rocks as well as anchor down the manzanita wood that's in here. Hmm. And um, I, use, I use the drill and zip ties. So they're all pretty much um, immovable. That rock weighs probably about 50 pounds. Phew. I took it, to a, uh, took it to a rock guy and he actually, um, he, he cut the stone for me. And um, so that's one rock that's been turned into two so that I could get the get the skate that I wanted. The manzanita that I'm using is from my good friend, um, Glenn Troiana. He, uh, he owns um, manzanitadirect.com. And this guy, he's delivered every time for me. Every time I need something, he painstakingly goes out into his uh, manzanita farm and he cuts this for me custom. Wow. And it's a good friend to have. <laughs> he's a great friend to have. And uh, He's, a, he's also a great source. I mean, anybody looking for Manzanita, he's a great guy to go to. Um, what I did with this build is, um, if you look at the green tape in the background, it's uh, it's actually the the uh, vertical stripes are uh, 16 inches apart, and the horizontal stripes are six inches apart, and that that cut down the aquarium into thirds because it's 18 inches tall. I wanted to go up every six inches to create the stripe. And because mm. it's 40 inches long, I wanted to go 16 to create the stripe. And <clears throat> where the stripes intersect is what allows you to take that rule of thirds and then create what's called the golden rule. And the golden rule, it's very important in photography. It's very important in aquascaping. And it's very important in design. It allows you to take nature and make it look like nature. And if you look at uh, nature aquascapes, you're going to see that rule of thirds all day long in photos, the good ones. Mm -hmm. And that's something that mm -hmm. I warranty in this one. What is the rule of thirds? So I see that you've divided into thirds this way, but is that just the rule or is there more to the rule for those that don't know it? The rule of thirds is again. It's actually very simple. It's it's um, you're you're drawn to the the, uh, the four intersect points. It it's almost like a rectangular tic tac toe in this one, and we're used you use the rule of thirds to create those four points, and that creates your your golden rule. And if you notice, I've got the one log right in the place where the tape is. You can't see it, and then the tape that you can see, that's the rear of the uh, dry creek bed that I have. Oh, okay, so, so the intersect are all blocked by wood, and then yeah. you have your focal point going to the one intersect, yeah, which like is the farthest point. part. Yeah. yeah, and if you notice, everything is in like a triangle mode. Mm -hmm. You've got it sloping down towards the intersection, then you've got the right sloping down towards the intersection. Then when you look at the riverbed, it starts out small in the back, and that's what creates depth, and it widens out as you get to the front. You mm -hmm. want everything big in the front and small in the back, and that's what helps you with depth. So, in a sense, you can take the rule of thirds and you can also use it on the bottom, where you have your big pieces in the front, you have your medium pieces in the middle, and then you have your smaller pieces in the back. Yeah. And that's 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 kind of how that worked. Now, <clears throat> interestingly enough, as soon as I got this inside the tank, I went, "Oh my God, what did I do?" I, I actually should have used your custom aquarium. I should have ordered a 48 24 because mm -hmm. I really needed that extra four inches in the back. 
And I made a big mistake by not doing that. I, I should have gotten that one from you guys instead. <laughs> and the reason I needed that four extra inches was depth. And I thought, what am I going to do? You know, I spent all this money. I've spent all this time. I have thousands of dollars invested into this tank. And holy smoke, I've got the wrong size tank. And so I had to come up with an idea. And I thought about a paradigm shift, which I learned about in school. And basically what it is, it's thinking outside of the box. And so in this case, it's kind of like thinking outside of the water box. <laughs> <laughs> what I did is I built a thin, tiny table made out of two by fours. And I have a two by four on top, two by four legs and a two by four base. And what I did is I drilled that and I went to Menards across the street and I got <clears throat> dowel rods. I got quarter inch dowel rods, one eighth inch dowel rods, and one sixteenth inch dowel rods. And I drilled them and I put all those little pieces in place, painted them the color of the wood. And then I slid this behind the aquarium to give me that extra four inches. And here's the video of it being slid in place. <laughs> okay, so that gives Sneaky. you the far off kind of distance into the build that yeah. you didn't have enough room to basically use all the ones that you originally wanted to, is that what happened? I just didn't have enough room in the back to, to place the smaller ones to get the depth that I wanted. And I'm, uh -huh. I'll kind of lean over here so you can kind of see it, uh, what it looks like right now. And in this video, I don't have the light, but I've got the uh, light in the back, that spotlight, mm -hmm. and that gives me that sunset or sunrise um, that I use during the day so that it, That's you so know, cool. it looks more natural and yeah. really, really accentuates that part of the rule of thirds. What is, what light are you using back there? Is it just like a regular bulb that's sitting back there with the dowels? It's a Home Depot spotlight that you use maybe to uplight a tree or okay. uh, it's on a, on a painting, something like that. It really does look like the sun off in the distance yeah, of the forest. That's I love really... the creativity, that's my favorite part. It's and then so when, you, when you use a good camera and you take the picture, I think you guys have already shown that one with the purple sky and the, the beautiful sunset. When you've got a really good camera, you can really manipulate that. There it is. Wow. To make this thing really pop. <laughs> so so um, I, I, every time I see this aquarium, I've kind of watched as you've built it up. Um, and I just still can't get enough of just looking at it. It's just so stunning. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 well, I, I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. When uh, I, I originally built this thing because I wanted to compete in the international contest. And when I slid that, um, those dowel rods in the back, um, that basically would disqualify me from the competition. Mm. Oh, wow. So, kind of, you know, it's kind of a bittersweet moment, but in all reality that, you know, the tank isn't for those guys, the tank is for me and the people that enjoy seeing it. So this is true. It's, um, it worked out well. Talk to us about the riverbed that you've made, because it actually looks like there's water running through the riverbed, um, and you know, it's just really n nicely made to be, I mean, how does it stay in place? Does it stay looking like that? Like, you know, what did you do to create that actual river look? It really does, if you kind of, if you kind of pause the picture right there, I don't know if you can, but you see the, the water, that's actually a mirror on the bottom. Oh. And so gives it that water effect. <laughs> and then the, uh, the wood is actually, again, I just drilled the end of it and zip tied it to the um, flow cell, and mm -hmm. it's just leaned up against the rock. To, and it, if you notice, one piece is really large, another one is medium, and then the ones behind it are, are really small, uh, tiny little pieces of wood that, again, give you that depth. Yeah. Um, also, the rock that I used, I've got about three or four different sizes of rock. And uh, believe it or not, those little rocks in the front that you see right now, I pulled those out of my neighbor's yard. Um, <laughs> I had to do it late at night so she could catch me, but uh, you know, got them in there, and uh, <laughs> they looked pretty good. But I, I took um, I took you know smaller and smaller rocks as I went towards the back, and again, that's what that's what gives you that depth. Awesome. So, what are you using substrate wise in there? Because of course, I see just kind of regular rocks in there, but do you have more under that for the actual plants? Uh, again, I, I wanted to save a lot of money because you know, the more money you save. Um, where you can, 
the more money you can spend on the you know the good stuff, the yeah. lighting, or, uh, yeah. cans, or things like that. So believe it or not, I've got crushed lava rock in there at 18 cents a pound, <laughs> and I've got uh, I've got organic potting soil, sand, and a peat mix that I got from Home Depot. All right, and I, I like it. it. Yeah, mixed all that up. And I covered it with water so that I could leach all the uh, ammonia out. It took about two weeks. And I filled that in on top of the lava rock. And on top of that uh, is where I spent a little bit of money. I got some flu ball uh, shrimp substrate mm. and put that over the top as a cap so that my uh, my dirt doesn't cloud the water. And uh, it's, it's a great planting medium. Um, the lava rock in the bottom, it, it allows for better uh, water flow so you don't have those dead spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, organic potting soil, in my opinion, it's it's every bit as good as these really expensive um, substrate soils that you get from from these large companies. Wow. Okay, so that's what's used back, kind of like in the built-up areas where you have the plants in the substrate. Um, is that mixture? Yes, that rock is actually seven inches tall. Oh. So, and behind oh. both of those rocks is straight substrate all the way down to the bottom. That's a lot of substrate to but, fill in. <laughs> yeah, these plants have plenty of room to grow. Uh, roots, you know, have great substrate, and it, um, it it makes it makes the maintenance a whole lot easier. Um, probably the biggest three things about an aquarium is the substrate you use, the light that you use, and the flow. And if you can get those three things down pat, you can have a beautiful planted aquarium and if you can make it through the first month, month and a half, which is the toughest part, mm -hmm. uh, from then on, it's it's once a week, and you don't have to do much to it. Wow, it's good. Right. So stick through the the harder times when it comes to a newer planted freshwater. Joe, where, yep. do you, where do you draw your inspiration from to come up with this kind of tank? Like, do you use photos or like some photography or just getting out in nature? I, what, what what gives you the inspiration to make this tank? I have been a slave to to Google Images. Yeah. And I probably go in there and I've looked at thousands of pictures. I've looked at nature photos. I've looked at aquarium photos. And I'll, I'll flip through something and I'll see this and I go, wow, that would be great. And then I'll flip to another one and I'll say, wow, that would be great. And then I'll flip to another one and I go, man, if I took those three and tried to combine them, yeah. I could have that no one else has done. Right. And for me, that's where it's at. I mean, you know, I haven't had an original thought in my entire life. I, I chid it from other people, and I just try to put it to use so that um, I can create something that, you know, I'm super happy with. Very nice, very nice. Right. Can you pull a little bit of everything and kind of make your own? Nice. Yes. Um, talk to us about plants and fish that you have stocked this and the, kind of your choices in plants and why, just to help with how your choice of your plants that you go in there can help with aquascaping and how to make everything look realistic. Well, I like to plant smaller plants in the front along with a few larger plants, again, so that you, you get that scale. I'm a big fan of dwarf sag. It's a great plant. It doesn't get more than two or three uh, inches high. It might be too tall for some tanks, but this one, the tank is so big, it's a it's a perfect foreground plant. You can kind of see a little bit of that uh, to the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got uh, behind a piece of wood, you've got the Java fern, which I'm a big fan of. It's a very easy plant to grow. It's, um, it doesn't take a whole lot of care. And then if you look right there behind the big rock, you've got some pink uh, plants and uh, you've got uh, water sprite behind those. And the, uh, the pink plants are basically uh, hygrophilia, and um, they're actually banned in the United States for sale, but you can collect them as a hobbyist. You just have to be real careful because it's a really invasive uh, species, but it's a beautiful plant and um, grows very well. It's called hygrophilia uh, polysperm. And then behind that, again, is the uh, water sprite or uh, deformance, people call it. It's got those beautiful, long, lacy leaves, and that's a great mid-ground plant. And uh, in the back of this particular tank, which you, it's, you're kind of a little bit low, but if you raise the photo up, you could see the limnophilia sessile flora. And um, also, I had um, 
I pulled all of that out about a, about a month and a half ago. And so my, my next attempt is to take a plant that is absolutely beautiful. It's a red plant. And um, I want to create like a fall type look. Oh. Nice. As to like a, a summertime look. And um, so I'm excited to see how that see how that works out. And it's I mean, if you look behind me, it's um, it's just now starting to grow and it's green in the beginning. But as the light um, permeates it, the leaves will turn a bright, bright maroon and red. And it's just a gorgeous plant. So I'm kind of experimenting with that right now. See, Joe can give his aquarium seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. My last one, I might, I might as well be able to change the change the seasons. And you ask <laughs> about the fish. Um, I love small fish. I've got uh, I've got cardinal tetras in there. I think about thirty, and I've got about uh, thirty five um, resboras in there. Uh, they're they're lamb chop resboras, hmm. which uh, they've got that coppery color with black, and it looks like there's a big pork chop on the side. And then I've got some. Uh, I've got some green uh, tiger endlers in there as well, uh, nice. along with auto sinkless, a bunch of shrimp that you can't see, and just uh, <laughs> an absolute multitude of, of fauna in there. Are your shrimp breeding like crazy, I'm guessing? They are. You know, it's, it's interesting. I don't see them a whole lot because what they've done is they've gotten down into that flow cell grid that I created. And, you know, they're moving the soil around. They're aerating it. Hmm. Um, come out at night and clean it. And um, although I don't get to see them a lot, they're doing a lot for my tank. And, uh, you know, obviously that's much appreciated. Are they varieties of cherry shrimp? I've got uh, I've got some super red cherries in there. I think I showed the super red cherries to you uh, the last time you guys mm -hmm. uh, did. It's, it's, it's a beautiful combination. They're, they're super, super red and they've got a little black hue to them. So it's almost like a black cherry. Um, uh -huh. And then I've got a lot of a mono shrimp. Uh, they're not the they're not the best looking shrimp in the world, but they they eat algae. I mean, just like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, those are really good cleaners to have for a planted aquarium. They'll take care of a lot of the bad algae. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so we talked about what's in there. How about what are you running on this for lights and flow and canister? Like we talked about, you said they're very important parts to this. What are your choices on this setup? Well, I'm, I'm an absolute huge fan of Chihiros. And this is the this is the Chihiros 120 Slim. And the 120 just means it's 120 centimeters long or four feet. And this gives you, uh, this gives you red, it gives you green, gives you blue, it gives you yellow, and it gives you uh, bright white. And you can actually take this uh, and use an app on your phone to customize it so you get the, you get the colors that you want. And um, on the, the bottom of the tank, um, my canister filter is, um, is an 850 um, Biomaster Thermal. And it has a pre-filter in it that I take out once a week, it takes me five minutes to take out the pre-filter, clean it and put it back. And then I'm supposed to clean out the main filter every six months. And I, clean, I took it out after four months to clean it and it looked like it was brand new. Wow. So the filter, by cleaning it once a week, and again, it's like a five minute process. It's catching everything that gets into your media. And, you know, you want your media actually to be clean. You think you might want a bunch of dirty water in there because it would make sense for the bacteria. But bacteria actually love clean water as much as fish do. So that was really important. I've also got a thermometer in there um, and it's uh, it's a 300 watt and basically for, for heaters, you want about one watt per liter. And I didn't really do the exact math. I, I knew it at one time, I've kind of forgotten it, but I think this is about a 280 liter tank once it's full. So I've got more than enough heat for the tank. And in addition to that, um, I used a Kedco um, fire engine red. This is so cool. I should have taken a picture of it for you, but it's it's a five pound CO2 tank oh. that uh, they use to brew beer with. <laughs> and it's done. It's got a great logo on it. It looks really cool. I've got that uh, hooked up to uh, an F-Zone regulator 
and my regulator feeds into uh, a quantity um, CO2 diffuser, which goes directly into my outflow uh, from my H50 thermomaster. Nice. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it sounds maybe a little technical, but it's really easy to set up. And um, it's there, everything's on a timer. So that, you know, my, my CO2 comes on about an hour before the lights do, goes off about an hour before the lights do as well. And I, lighting is very important. Um, I only give this tank six hours of light. Wow. And uh, the reason I do that is because I, I don't want I don't want it to be infested with algae. I tried it once. I thought I had overcome it, and I popped it to eight, and boom, I had an algae bloom. Wow. So you know, with, with all the fertilizer and everything that I'm putting in here, and the, the strength of the light, um, I try to keep it to about six hours. Good to know. Very yeah, cool. Right. So is is it? So nothing of the CO2 is actually seen inside the tank because it runs into your canister? Actually, actually, what, what happens is the, the CO2 um, goes through a coolant V diffuser and a little tube runs into the um, outflow. And the outflow is actually below the tank. Oh. So everything, everything is hooked up. So the CO2 goes uh, from the tank through the regulator through the diffuser and the diffuser breaks everything up and then it's introduced into the outflow. So my CO2 is actually out of the outflow. You can't see anything. Nice. So every, everything is hidden. So you got great, great equipment on there. What does that lead to for your maintenance schedule to keep up with a planet aquarium like this? Well, the maintenance schedule is something that I do um, literally every Monday. And I, um, I take half the water out, I turn off my canister, I clean my canister, I take a magic eraser and um, the non-chemical one, and I go inside, I clean the inside of the glass, and um, then I fill it back up. And I'm going to send you a video of something I've done. You can't really see it. Um, if, you, if you knew what was behind my wall, um, you'd understand why I'm so happy about this room. It's my laundry room. And I have a laundry sink behind this room. And I drilled a hole through the wall so that when I want to turn the water on, all I have to do is go into the laundry room, flip the switch, and it fills up the tank from a piece of PVC that I have drilled through the wall. Beautiful. Nice. That's and a then, great way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I love automation, or as much automation as you can when it comes to water changes. Oh yeah, and then and then when I want to drain the tank, all I do is go in there and unscrew the tubing, and it drains the water. Wow. So it's just it's it's literally no work. I I've got a I've got a uh, or my my apologies. I've got a uh, water box sixteen. It takes me longer to do a water change in that than it does in my <laughs> sixty five. We always talk about how important like automating and making like maintenance easier is. We always usually kind of say it in reference to salt water, but with fresh water, it's the same way. The easier you can make it if you have the room or the means, like yeah. do it because you're going to enjoy more time with the aquarium, less time doing maintenance. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a great situation to have that for sure. Smart. I love that. Um, how about dosing and stuff, or do you need to do any dosing with you're doing regular water changes? Yes, I, uh, I, I'm using uh, APT fertilizer. Um, it's a great, uh, great fertilizer. Dennis Wong puts it out, and um, I just I use the same amount each and every time. Um, I usually do it after my first water change, and I do it in the middle of the week. Hmm. Um, I do also add. Um, a little bit of they call it they call it liquid CO2, even though it's not it's it's a Seachem product, and I put that in because it's a it's basically an algaecide, and uh, it, there's if you put the right amount in, it's going to help with your algae, but it's not going to harm any of your fish or or any of your invertebrates, and I do that usually uh, I do about a cap full of that a day. Okay, nice. nice. Seems pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. And I've got a whole house water system, so I don't have to treat my water at all. Even better. You got yeah. it down to a science, it seems. Well, like I say, lots of mistakes. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of that, okay. 
someone who wants to get into, you know, live plants, you know, more professional scaping, freshwater in general, uh, what kind of tips and tricks and like knowledge would you pass along to that person? Well, I, I told you guys this the first time we did the interview. Um, patience is the key to success. And, you know, it, it, it's, it, it takes a long time to properly set up mm -hmm. a good quality planted tank. So you have to be patient. The other thing you need to do is you need to do your research. Because if you don't do the research, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And it's going to cost you double to fix those mistakes. So okay. I would recommend um, buying a good book. You know, you can you can watch tutorials on YouTube. They're very helpful. Uh, there's a guy out there with an aquascaping book. His name is George Farmer. He um, he's from England. It's a $13 um, hardback book, and it literally takes you from step one all the way to um, the finish line. Wow. And like right. I said, I've been doing this over 50 years. Uh, some of the best teachers are, are still willing to learn. And, and I actually, I bought his book before I set this tank up just to kind of, you know, read it again and, and refresh and make sure that, you know, everything you're doing is right. There's, there's no quick um, solution to success. Um, you literally have to, you know, read some type of information um, from front to back to make sure that you're properly educated before you start a planet tank. Because if you don't, within the four to five days, it's going to be covered with algae. Uh. <clears throat> no one wants that. <laughs> no, no one wants that. The brutal you know, truth. Yeah. It is. It is. It's, it's, but it's, it's, a, it's a $13 book. Again, by George Farmer, it's an aquascaping book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. It'll save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Thank you for the it's suggestion. I'm sure that's gonna help a lot of people out yeah. of where to kind of like get some good literature. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and there's, a, and there again, there's a lot of information on YouTube. Um, so, you know, the, the, the most important thing is you just try to put off the excitement of building that tank, get prepared and then, you know, do it the right way. Love it. Very good advice. Yeah. Be patient. Do your research. I think that kind of follows for like pretty much all hobbies, animals. You know, kind of equates to that. And it is really the best, most solid information um, that you can give. Yeah, absolutely. Did forget to ask. How long has this water box been set up? Like, when did you build this out? Oh, let's see. I started it in uh, January. And, and, you know, I got to mention this too. One of the things that I tried to do for the hobby is, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm 60 years old. I don't uh, move around as well as I used to. Uh, so I knew I was going to build some, I was going to need some help building this because it was just me. So what I did is I went to my aquarium group and I put a notice out that um, I would mentor somebody to teach him how to start a planet tank in order for, and, and in return, they would help me build it. That's and awesome. I got, yeah, I got a really nice pastor that um, I had about 15 people that responded, but his his was the best reason. And uh, he came over. We worked for about a week to get everything set up. And uh, I think he's bought uh, two water boxes since then. So, wow. you know, good for you guys and, and definitely good for me. I didn't have to work nearly as hard as I thought I was going to. You gave him the freshwater itch and got him started. That's really awesome. Yeah, that's you really know, good. There's not a lot of people out there that do take people under their wing and kind of show them the ways. They do rely a lot on YouTube and like, you know, maybe aquarium groups and stuff. So that's a kind of a cool thing to maybe other people should try and like pass around us yeah. an idea. Yeah, it's such a great, great idea. Love it. Well, the tank is beautiful. I can't wait to see as you change its season. I'm looking forward to that um, and the way that it kind of matures and grows over the next years. Yeah, and if you guys want to see a bit more of Joe's tank, if you're not already, hop on our uh, Facebook group. You have a lot of it there, right? Uh, can the viewers yeah, find you on Instagram as well? My name, and they'll pop right up. Okay, cool. And for any um, social um, pages or anything that you have that is kind of centered around your tank uh, or just groups? 
you know, I, I, I post on your site. Um, I, I, um, I'm actually, I'm the administrator for the Wichita um, Fish Owners Group. We've got about 3,000 members and um, we just did a, you know, big, huge auction. So we got a lot of people involved that way. Um, but I'm, I'm really, you know, I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't do anything like that. I'm, I'm not in it to make money. I, I just try to give back because I love the hobby. You do and, also run or help run um, some groups on Facebook, right? Low tech and high tech planted aquariums. Uh, low tech um, aquariums. I'm a member of high tech. Um, if people are looking for plants, um, I'm also the administrator of uh, Planet Tank Quick Auction, and uh, we actually auction off plants on that group. Um, because it's an auction only site, our rules are very strict. You uh, you can only put a bid in the comment. You can't you know talk and have fun and do all that stuff that allow other that other sites allow you to do. Because if you're not careful, uh, Facebook will come in and actually remove the group. Yeah. So real strict about that, but it's a it's a great place to find exotic plants um, for your uh, for your tanks to you know have something that you might not normally find in your uh, local store. Awesome. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed learning about how you, you know, design this, and I think it's going to enlighten a lot of other people. So we really yeah, appreciate absolutely. you joining That's, us for this. So oh. our our goal oh. with our goal with Fresh Friday is to to give these guys, our viewers, inspiration to jump into this hobby. So I think your tank is a wonderful example of that. Well, I, I certainly appreciate the feedback, guys. Thank you so much for having me, and um, I tell you what, I'd love to do it again sometime. Awesome. We'll talk to you again soon, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Matt. Hey. Hey. <laughs> there, guys. That was a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I, I just love his aquarium. Yeah. It's turned out so awesome. And I learned so much yeah. with him explaining some of the rules and showing how he really created. I mean, that tank looks so deep. And yeah. It just goes on forever. Mm -hmm. And it looks so real. Um, so much planning goes into that. Yeah, so thank you, Joe. We appreciate that. And all you guys in the comments, thank Joe for that. that was, that's some amazing knowledge that he's dropping on us with that build. Yeah, it's hard to get that, that detailed information and, like, laid out for you. So um, Joe's been part of our events quite a bit. So, yeah. I mean, he, he knows what he's doing. He's had a, a lot of beautiful aquariums. Um, so hopefully that gave you some inspiration to try something completely different yeah, and yeah. out of your normal realm with fresh water and, you know, thinking outside the box like he did with that yeah. back panel. So smart having that table behind it to create even more of that depth look to him, even in a somewhat more narrow um, build. I'm taking an all-in-one and turning it into, you know, a no filtration thing just for the footprint was very, very smart. Yeah. Very cool. So, we ready? We got some winners? We do. All right. So, we got the winners for the $5 gift cards. We got two of them to give away. Are you ready? Ready. Do it. All right. Winner number one Jan Acab. Woo! Congratulations, Jan. <laughs> giving away lots of monies today. We got another one. We're giving away $1,000 in this stream plus $10,000 total all day. Yeah, so. I'd love to know if you are one that wins a gift card. <clears throat> Tell us what you're buying. Yeah. What are you doing with that 500 bucks? So that is awesome. It's a good time to get these gift cards, too, because we're running a sale. So yes, you maximize so get those even dollars. More. All right, so we got one more winner for this stream here. Ready? Tammy Paula. Congratulations, Woo! Tammy. That is great. Congratulations. It pays to watch because, as you saw, the bonus board got dropped randomly throughout the stream. That got you extra entries. We will have that again um, at the 1 p.m., which is mm -hmm. coming up real soon. We'll see you in a little bit. Yep. And we have live aquascaping from James Plemons. You don't want to miss that. And yeah. we'll see you in about 15 minutes. See you guys. See you. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Don't go anywhere. Make sure to join us on the next Fresh Friday stream for more guests and giveaways. And don't forget, Fresh Friday is the best day to save big on your new Waterbox Aquarium. For more about Fresh Friday, visit waterboxaquariums.com.